All right, everybody, welcome back to Digging In. I am your host, Matt Rosenthal. And as always, I'm bringing to you somebody who is truly amazing. Her name is Dr. Lisa Lewis. And real quick, before we get to her, I'm just going to tell you something about her. First of all, she's had an amazing journey. And I think that you, I know you're going to find this really just, just interesting, her story. She sees everything half glass full. And just by listening to her, you're going to feel good. I'm telling you right now. Um, all about service to others. And here's the deal. She helps single moms find love and money. And this is very cool. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Oh, your shoulder moving. Yes, that gives <laughs> that gives me the goosebumps. I love it. Love and money. Yes. Love, isn't that great? It's great. <laughs> it is. So I will tell you, this is unique because your your the angle, the things you're going to talk about, this is definitely something different. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to hear you tell me and everybody who watches this, uh, how you got on the journey you got on to do what you're doing now. Would you mind, would you mind bringing us back to like the beginning and tell us how this all started for you? Absolutely. Love so <laughs> love and money. That's important. So I was, um, a single mom, a young single mom trying to climb the corporate ladder. And, uh, I was super excited, Matt. I had what I thought was the dream boss a female boss. And I knew she would understand my grind and my hustle and want to support me in, in getting ahead uh, professionally. And she told me one day, uh, Lisa, I think you're a little overambitious. What? Who says that? Who says that? And, and she said, you know, when I was your age, um, no shade or, you know, downplaying being a, a receptionist or secretary. But she said, when I was your age, I was still a secretary. I wasn't in the corner office and running my own entire office and having a team of 10. So I think you need to slow down a little bit. And when I tell you I was dejected, I felt like the bottom was just pulled out from underneath me because I don't know where she was in her early 20s, but I was a single mom. I wanted my daughter in dance class and summer camps and all that great stuff. I didn't want her to have to lack anything. And so I, I climbed under what I call the proverbial rock, stopped hustling, stopped applying for promotions and getting the education and that sort of thing. And then a year later, Matt, I found myself in the same position, not making any more money and still having to tell my daughter no more often than I'd like to. So I said, you know what? That's her box, not mine. So I need to get on about the business of getting ahead. And I did. And I said goodbye to that boss for a promotion and went up the corporate ladder ever since. So I was able to um, provide abundantly for my daughter. I later did get married and was married for about a decade and found myself a single mother again, this time of two, but I was much further along my journey yeah. and uh, could comfortably take care of them. So that's why I started helping other single moms. I did not want to interrupt you. I have like f just five things that came to mind while you were Absolutely. just talking. Um, so what, so you were in your early twenties. Like, so mm -hmm. you found your, you found, you have a very clear purpose. Oh yes. And when you wake up with a purpose that creates a passion and that's, yes. I see it. Like you're talking about it. Like I can feel that we talked before the show, like you, you have yes. clarity, right? So for so many people, we might jump around, around a little bit here, but for mm -hmm. so many people who wake up every day, and they don't, they feel like they're just going to work, you know, they got to pay the bills. Like what I just heard was so important because when you have a purpose every day and that purpose is like a passion, you probably don't feel like you're going to work. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, because I had a goal in mind and I had a reason, my why, right? Before talking about a why was a big thing because I had my why that was my passion. That fueled me. I like being able to write the check. I, right. I like being able to say, oh, you want to go to summer camp? Great. I got it. Okay. You want to do this? All right. We can do that. Um, please don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean I wasn't independently wealthy. It doesn't mean I didn't need to budget and all that kind of stuff, but I had it to budget. 
So I want to talk, I want to get to that for, in a second about the finances. So you were in your early twenties when this, this kind of just happened. And this, there's so many people that can yes. relate to, to that. Like you're in your twenties and there's different things that happen to, to different people, you know, it, and there's different challenges. So you had your challenge and, you know, in a, in a way it defined you, but it also laid this found, the found work, this groundwork for other people that you're, you're, you're helping and you're going to continue to help, right? Because of Absolutely. your experience. But when that happened and you said to me that you, you made a decision when you worked for that first boss and what I was writing when you were talking, which I'm glad you touched on her story she was dropping her story on you, yes. her own narrative, her own story was in a way hold, it could have held you back if, but you would, you didn't let it at some point. It sounds like a year later, you were like, no, that's not my story. That's right. That's her story. That's exactly right. And, and it did hold me back. It held me back for a year. I didn't advance. Um, and I'm, I professionally, my background is in finance. And so there weren't many women in the finance arena where I, where I was, um, and absolutely not black. <laughs> so, so the fact that I even wanted to progress in the financial management field was unheard of because I didn't see many people that look like me. So that's why Matt, I was so excited to be working for a woman. Cause I just knew I had like a cheerleader, somebody that was going to yeah. encourage me. And so, yeah, I, that I was bummed. Yeah, instead, you had somebody who had her own issues and everybody's got something, but she Absolutely. had something that, that really, thankfully you were able to see past that. And what you did is pretty cool. You decided to change. I use yes. the word pivot, like you pivoted. Absolutely. What I want you to do is tell me and everybody about that period of, of your life, because most people, I believe, I'm saying most people. That's from my experience, what I've observed, yes. let fear stop them from changing. You must have been afraid, but you pushed through it. I, I was afraid, but here's the irony. I wasn't afraid of what people would think. I know this, is, this. trust me, look, viewers and listeners, this may sound strange. I was more afraid of not being able to provide for my daughter. That's where my- Totally relatable. Is. That's totally relatable. Yes. I think so many people can, can connect with that. Did you come from, I'm not sure if you said it before or not, but did you come from means like when you were a child or, or did you? Yes. You I did. had, I had no, uh, I want to word this correctly. So I am not. So just a say, it, say it for real. Whatever. Okay. So I'm not a statistic. I didn't come from, uh, um, um, meager beginnings. Uh, I grew up in a two parent household in a, a solidly middle class. And in some instances considered upper middle class, uh, household. We grew up in church. We went from elementary school through high school with the same kids in the neighborhood. Um, mostly everybody went to college only so many miles away from home, the whole nine yards. So no, Sorry, I don't have a hard luck story. So, <laughs> no, it's it's interesting because it's the other way, which is so. Anybody who watches this or knows me knows that that I do, right? So, but the thing is, I can relate to to what you just said, but for a totally different reason. It's actually really interesting, and I, I'm I'm just I'm curious. Like for me, I grew up with nothing. I grew up very poor, and as I got older, I always had this fear of not having enough, of going back to that as I began to have means. And so underneath it, you know, if I had an unhappy customer or something was going on yes. in my company, when I would unpack that, it would go back to like this, this deep seated fear that I wasn't really aware of until I figured it out about the fear of not having enough, the fear of, of, of like going back to where I came from. You don't have that, but I want, but there's something you're like so, everybody. We don't, we don't want to, it's a, maybe the discomfort. You don't want to be uncomfortable. The fear of. I didn't want to raise statistics. Say that I, didn't, again. I didn't want to raise statistics That's because, yeah. because as a single mom, right. And as a single black mom, what I heard people say often some very unkind things was that, you know, oh, your daughter's going to be a single mom like you and, oh, she's not going to have. And, um, people said that to you. Yes. And, and, um, 
And so two things occurred because I did have growing up, it's not, it wasn't my daughter's fault and eventually both children, it wasn't my son's fault that the relationship didn't work out. So they shouldn't have to suffer because their parents didn't work out, right? 100%. Um, and so, and I wasn't raised that way. So it didn't make sense to me that, that they would have to do without. And for, in terms of, and, and I know you see the news and you see things happen um, across our country, our great country, you see things happen and people sometimes make the statement, oh, he grew up in a single parent household or she grew up in a single parent household. So we expected no more from them because they didn't wow, have anything available. Yes. It's like, it's like labeling somebody Absolutely. and setting the bar low and then that sticks with them and they actually carry that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and where can they go from there? Who's feeding into them uh, so that they can aim for it, reach for more, desire more. And so that's what I wanted to instill in my children so that they didn't miss a beat. So I wanted to raise them to fly to soar, to be contributing members of society, which they both are today. Um, But it was hard work. It was uh, love in every sense, self-love, love love for them. And the bottom line is it took money. (laughs) Talk about the the love for a sec. The the fact that, well, that's really, that's that's important. The self-love, right? You can't love somebody else unless you love yourself first, right? Correct. Absolutely. 100%. And people are surprised because um, I'm working on a book now. It's it's coming out next month, but the love and money. And so when you get into the love part, it's it's a um, bait and switch somewhat. Self-love. You can't find uh, the kind of relationship that you want that's healthy and mutually beneficial uh, without the self-love first. And you can't be the best mom you can possibly be without loving yourself and caring for yourself because we can't teach that which we don't know. And we can't give what we don't have. So, so how does somebody know if they even need to focus on that? Like what, how do they like, step back and have the self-awareness to say, okay, um, I need to focus on me. Like, where does that thought, what's the trigger? Two triggers. One, how, how loving are your children as a single mom, right? So our children are a mirror of what it is that we're sharing and what we're exhibiting in front of them. Not so much what we're saying, but our actions. That's one trigger. The second trigger, wait for it. I don't know that you're ready. I can't write as fast as you're talking. Oh my God, <laughs> All right, go ahead. So the second trigger is who are you dating? All right, go kind, slow, go, go who, ahead. Who are you dating? What kind of individuals do you attract in your circle? Are you dating the same type of um, person that doesn't add joy to your life, that isn't bringing something positive, but is pulling you down and not encouraging you? That's another trigger. Because when we feel good about ourselves, uh, when we show up in a room, we light up the room. Your energy is magnetic. Exactly. And, like and your lo- energy. Right. And the loser's not coming. The loser's not coming to the person that's lit up like a Christmas tree. Only the confident guy who has something to offer and has something to bring to the table is going to approach that person. I so got to tell you why I'm chuckling. So okay. <laughs> I have somebody sitting next to me who works with me and she, she's behind the scenes going, yeah, she's good. Yeah, yeah, she's good. <laughs> it's like, but Jamie, write down two questions. At the end, you're gonna, you can ask her two questions that come to your mind as a, as a woman. Okay, that's different. Keep going, this is great. So those are your two triggers. Those are two. To your know children whether are or not. Mirror yes. And who you're dating. So that, that you being able to say, okay, I see how my children are, 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 are behaving and I see that the relationships maybe are a pattern and I don't yes. feel good in them. So I guess the GPS, the thing that really pokes you and says, wait, what's going on here is you recognizing a feeling that, that's yes. not good. Yes. Right? And I'm the common denominator. So this yes. doesn't feel good. So in order to change the dynamic 
because we can't change other people. Let me change my energy. Let me do some investigative work as to why it is I'm attracting these kind of people. What actions am I uh, distributing and displaying that I don't even realize? And I am a proponent of therapy. Mm -hmm. I am a proponent of coaching and mentorship. Get all the help you can get, books, whatever it is, um, in order to do the deep dive to figure out what it is and the behavioral patterns that we're exhibiting. And so the love and money piece is, it's okay as single moms, we know we want love, we want a relationship, we're now a package deal. So we don't have time to meet somebody to see if they'll make a good addition to the family, give them time and room and space to become a good addition. This person's got to hit the ground running, so. Wow. You know, everything you just said, therapy, coaching, books, like it's all true and all of it together. Like, but that's the difficult part, right? It's even with those, with the, with the awareness that like so many people are plagued with, like, I'm not good enough. Like it's underneath this false belief. And so they, they unintentionally but keep attracting these people who are, are in different ways, verbally abusive or toxic yes. or, or whatever. And they really never find fulfillment and joy and happiness at that other wavelength where we all are, are really designed to operate. Yes. Right. Because they, they keep attracting the wrong person, but they are the root cause. I mean, yes. that's like. It's their BS. I mean, that's powerful stuff. I call it. It's their BS. It's their belief system that, that they've got to, you know, make a shift. I know I didn't curse folks. It's their, it's their belief. I think it's, it's both. I think it's, I think you call them bullshit on those people <laughs> because their belief system is bullshit. And we could say it and jokingly, but it is true. Those he said systems, it, I didn't, but you're, you're exactly right. The belief systems are in the garbage, right? They're self-limiting. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not attractive enough. Um, I don't have enough money. I don't have time. And I tell you what, you're beautiful because there's always somebody who looks better, but there, but you are uniquely you. So there is something that you bring to the table that that exists in you that nobody else has, and it's freaking amazing. I want to come give Own you a hug it. through this. <laughs> own it, you know? So whether it's your smile, your eyes, your nose, heck, if it's your elbow, make sure you wear sleeveless tops so everybody can see your elbows. Whatever it is, you've got something that you are just rocking amazingly. Uh, you're too old. I've got a combat for that. As long as you've got breath in your body, you're not too old. Until we're pushing up daisies, we still got time to meet somebody nice, you know, and, and at that stage, you might just be sitting on the front porch, rocking together and holding hands, but it's something, right? Uh, right. It's a life, it, life is just so, a, it's too short absolutely. to, to not like connect with that side of yourself. Everybody, I mean, tell me if you agree with this and I, I've you know, read this in books and, and I've just picked it up here and there, like we all are born the same way, so to speak. Like there's no beliefs. You're not born with these things. Like Correct. it's all learned behaviors. So yep. whatever had happened in anybody's life that adversity or trauma or whatever, it can all be changed if yes. you want to change it. And so in the, in the very specific case of what you're talking about with women um, who are single moms, like you're saying that they have the power to choose to think whatever they want to think. Yes. And that's Screw everybody else. Screw everybody else. Screw yeah. the people who are saying, you know, you're a single mom. You should be happy with any guy that wants to be. That's another lie. Uh, you should be happy with any guy who wants to deal with you and your children. No, absolutely not. That's not acceptable. Would you tell your daughter, your son that? No. So then don't tell me that either. I don't have to. What settle. do you say to that person? Like, what should they do if that's how they think? If that's how they think, uh, we work together to help change that stinking thinking, basically. Oh God, you're full of these one-liners. I love it. <laughs> the BS, the stinking thinking. Yeah, we just, we just, I just work with people to help. And that's why I, I have such a passion for single moms yeah. because, you know, reverse that. That's, that's not cool. If that's not something you would tell and teach your children, then why, why eat it? 
if 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 I'm not gonna feed it to my kids, I'm not eating it. So yeah, later with that. All right, I ran, I followed you so far down. We went, we went too far. Too I apologize. Far. Right, so let me get back to your 20s. <laughs> I get so excited. This is good. Like I find I followed you. Um, all right. So you went to the second to the so you left that first job with that yes. terrible person you worked with. You went to somebody else. And but I wanted you to tell me somewhere in there is where you realize you have a bigger calling where you really could help other people. Right. So take me through that little bit of your journey right there. So when I got into the professional job. Um, and climbing the ladder, people literally, I will be walking down the hallway and people would tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, I see you. I know you used to work here in this department and you're now doing this. Would you mind mentoring so-and-so? Sure. Hey, I will be on the street. I will be in the supermarket with my kids and somebody would say, oh, you know, you're doing such a great job with these kids. And that's amazing. You know, my daughter, I don't understand what's going on with her. Would you mind talking to her? Sure. On the phone. This was, I'm over 50. Okay. So this was before uh, all the internet and stuff that we have now. So I, I actually made a telephone call. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, about to, we're about the same age. And I remember before, before mobile phones. Long so, time before hey, a long time ago, right? So, so I would get on the phone and talk with these women. I would have lunch with them. Um, and so it was just, it was just so much a part of me, like breathing. So that's just kind of how it happened. And then I ended up on uh, executive boards for mentorship at the job and outside the job. And I ended up on, um, equal employment opportunity committees and leadership boards, all that kind of stuff, because it's just who I am. And the fact that I broke through barriers, that when I showed up in rooms and spaces and people were like, wow, how did you get here? Um, we never heard of you, you know, and next thing you know, you're here, but it was a lot of hard work. And it was doing what we talked about earlier is, is dealing with my BS, getting the help that I need along the way and um, reading books that were feeding me. Cause again, back, back before internet and all this wonderful stuff we have now and, and digging in the, into that. And, and my faith quite honestly is a tremendous part of that as well. Can we go into when, when you said the help what, what kind of, like, what did you, what was your process? Like, what did you go through? What, what does that mean to you with the, the help you need? So the help that I needed, quite honestly, was therapy. So imagine finally meeting a great guy and then uh, 10 years down the road, it just wasn't working. So I had already uh, challenged myself and dealt with the struggles of being a single parent of one. And here I was uh, embarking on the journey to be a single parent of two. That did mess with my psyche. So right. I did meet with um, a therapist and work through all of that stuff, had somebody walk me through and unpack what that meant and how that impacted me psychologically and deal with the potential social impacts as well and do it in such a way and even my children were involved and do it in such a way that we we could get on the other side as unscathed as possible how long was that process that process was over a couple of years yep yeah, over a couple of years and and oh please note i keep a therapist on speed dial so <laughs> <laughs> Look, that was this, video calls, right? Yeah, this is not a one and done. This is this is as often as you need it because we all do. I believe we all suffer trauma. We all have setbacks. If you if we live long enough, something will happen unexpectedly in life. And so um I believe in having, I make informed decisions and I believe in having all the resources available uh, when we need them, as we need them, so. That's a really powerful message, you know? I, 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 um, 
I'll just share with you that, that I think I spent about uh, five or six years going for in, in therapy for different reasons. One, it started with a business partner of mine who suggested that we, we do it. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea because we're going to end yeah. up splitting up the company if we don't figure out the relationship right. problem. That, that therapist slash business coach, I developed a good relationship with, which ended up being years and years and years. He ended up then, uh, I ended up having a divorce with the business guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but that person continued to work with me and really unpack my own, my own trauma from childhood and how it was affecting my life and my kids and my marriage and everything else. Years. It was years and years and years. If I, I if I hadn't gone through that, like, I, and I, I didn't actually believe in therapy prior to that, Most but I will don't. tell you that there yeah. are, there are, there's a lot of value in it. Yeah. And there's certainly a time where he looked at me at a certain point, which was like a year ago. He was like, I don't think we need to continue right now. It's like, you, you, you're, you're good. Yeah. But during that time, I'm just adding on to what you're saying. I also, towards the end of that process, spent three months uh, working with a, a coach on the focused on, this is a male thing, how to be the best version of myself as a man. Yeah. I'm, I know for a fact that he works with women who, who do that with other women focus on helping women become the best version of themselves that they can, that all of those things combined, yes. they're, they're, forget that there's shame in it. This is the type of thing that everybody could benefit from because Absolutely. how why not reach your own potential? Absolutely. And why carry childhood crap around with you and crap from relationships that, that you, you, you do carry from, you know, with you through life? Absolutely. Everybody's got something to your point. Yep. And then, and then when something triggers you or somebody triggers you, Instead of jumping all over them, you've got the tools to say, okay, wait a minute, mm -mm. something's happening here. It's not them, it's me. Give me a yep. minute. <laughs> Let me yep. kind of deal, work with this for a minute and then, and then I'll come back. So be clear, it's not you. It's this, this triggers something in me. It's something so, from, from 30 years ago. Exactly. <laughs> that you're carrying in like you're in the fiber of your, of your, your, body exactly i want to ask you something else i wrote down that um i don't want to interrupt you when you're talking you're just such great stuff um i was curious so you you work with a lot of women and you yes. have over 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 a long period of time what have you found is the most if you can say this the most if you can if you can see it the most common reason that relationships don't work out the most common reason that relationships don't work out from what I've seen is that we don't tend, men and women don't tend to bring the best version of themselves to the table. And so when I'm lacking and I'm bringing lack to the table, where can it go? Where can it go without the both of us getting help together? right? With, with the therapist, if that's necessary, if we think that the relationship is salvageable. And um, because when we bring the best version of ourselves to the table, we can, um, we can relate and, and interrelate and be intimate on a truthful level. Oh my gosh. Intimacy was, was the, uh, one of the words I was interested in hearing. I'm, I'm glad you said that. Intimate on a truthful and, level. And what about um, vulnerability? You can be vulnerable when you're comfortable in the skin that you're in. Say that again. It, it broke can, up when you say it again. I apologize. You can be vulnerable when you're comfortable with in the skin you're in. That's right. And when you can do that, what you bring to the relationship is very powerful. Doesn't mean yes. there's going to be reciprocation. But exactly. You're showing up. And it doesn't mean it won't be. It's not. It's going to be perfect because you got right. two imperfect people. Right. But if if we're bringing the best of ourselves to it. There's nowhere to go but up. We might have some bumps, just like we do in an airplane taking off, right? There's a little bit of turbulence to, to climb the heights. But once you get to that sweet spot, oh my gracious, just enjoy the ride. We're going to do a weekly show, Dr. Lisa. And Matt. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> this is so cool. This is such a great topic. Okay, I want to bounce a few more words off you when it comes to relationships, because even you're dealing with women who are, who are, who are single moms, yeah. but they're going to be... A, in some relationships in the future so this whole topic of how can you show up as the best version of yourself with that framework in mind what about communications what do you mean when you say communication uh, you being able to be a good communicator and to recognize in the relationship how important communications is 
Yeah. So look at it. I, again, looking, look at it like this. So when I talk to single moms, I say, just like when you go and talk to the principal at your child's school, just like when you talk to the, um, the coach on the team, you are clear, you are articulate and you are to the point about what it is that you want and you need for your child. Advocate for yourself the same way you do for your child. Communication is key. It's so important. Yes. So communication, intimacy, um, being vulnerable, being confident enough in yourself to, to, to do that. Like these are all the things. So yes. do these things all come up? So now we're kind of bringing it forward. Absolutely. So you, you, you're, you went through the process you went through. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. You came out, I mean, like a shining light. Like you're like the sunshine I'm looking at. Like he's, <laughs> he's coming out of you. I'm serious. Thank you. Whole energy. And now you're able to bring that. And by the way, it doesn't sound like you, I mean, it sounds like you had a really good, stable um, start. Like, so you had a good opportunity to begin with. Everybody has trauma. Okay. Right. So, so yes. everybody goes through something, <laughs> yes. but you were able to get through it, yes. whatever it was for you. Yes. And two relationships that didn't work, knowing what you know, you're able to share so much now with people. So give me an idea of some of the most difficult situations you've you've encountered and how you helped somebody get through it not to put you on the spot but let's see I, I let me see the most difficult situation not you I mean somebody you're working with somebody you're or helping. somebody that oh is um I have helped please don't send Matt hate mail don't send me hate mail I have helped women transition out of unhealthy relationships that is a challenge all right you got to take me through that process because you just hit on something that's probably the most important thing in this conversation what how does that go what is that process so that process only starts only begins when someone comes to me and they 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 realize they're ready to go so i don't have any discussions with any anyone who is not ready, period. Uh, you know, the proverb, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So right. if, if they're not ready, well, call me when you are. And if, and if you never call me, that's fine too. If you like it, I love it. Okay. But if, <laughs> but if you're, but if you're ready to transition out of an unhealthy relationship, um, this is the brass tax. We unpack and work with what are the options that you have available? How can you leave physically, right? And, and if they can't leave immediately, how do we stay in long enough until you can get out in a healthy way, in a proactive way? I, I, I know where resources are available for those that are in physically abusive relationships, um, emotionally abusive, get help now. Again, I encourage going to therapy. Most health insurance does cover some form of therapy uh, and start getting stronger spiritually, emotionally, and psychologically because then the transition is much easier. We can find you a place to live. Uh, that's where the money part comes in. We can, some women need to get a job that haven't worked outside of the home uh, in a number of years, finding a job, um, being able to put aside a couple of dollars, finding a place to live, all of those things. So th that is definitely, um, those are the harder scenarios, but I've seen success. I have seen success in, in women who have come out of unhealthy relationships to go on to be, um, gainfully employed. Their children are doing well. And, and they are living their, their best life at this particular stage. That's really rewarding, actually, that you get, you get to take somebody who wants to go through that process, through the process, and watch what you know inevitably will happen if they, probably if they take your advice, you know, if they, mm -hmm. if they kind of follow the, the program. And on the other side of that, to watch them like blossom and like get back to the, who they really are, um, maybe out from underneath whatever the bad relationship was. Yeah. And, and, uh, and the rewarding. common, and the common statement is I should have left sooner. I wish I had left sooner. 
right? Um, but but we don't know what we don't know. And if we don't uh, have the courage or the strength or the fortitude, sometimes we need people to have it for us in yeah. order to help us through. And, you know, I guess doesn't the beliefs we talked about a little while ago, like the I'm not good enough and yeah. all the things that are good, that plays into stopping you from making that decision, Absolutely. Right? And then, and, and okay, here's the, here's the big one. And who else is going to want me? Who's going to want me? Two kids, one kid, three kids, four kids. That's really who, sad. Right. But who, who, but it is sad, but that's, that's a sad why, thought. I mean, like exactly. But that's why people like me are shouting it from the rooftop. Yeah. Is that, uh, that one, somebody will, but you do and your kids do. So let's start there. And uh, when people see that again, like I say, people, uh, uh, you want to attract a partner, a life partner, they see that and they're attracted to that. And next thing you know, you're in a loving, healthy relationship. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, there's so many words that you've, you've said, like, as we've been talking, and you started out with about yourself, just hard work. Um, I feel like you said something but what I heard was setting goals, you know, yes. having, having a plan. And, you know, for you, even when, when you went through difficult times, it sounds like you were, you stayed like um, disciplined or maybe committed like to yourself. Like, like you just, you just kept going. Like you didn't, maybe you hit a wall, but you figured out a way over around or through it. I mean, that's what I felt like I was hearing before. Yes. And the commitment was when at times when I didn't have the courage to commit to myself, it was the commitment to my kids. Right. They were the motivating factor. Yes. And so now you're 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 part of what you're doing is you're actually being that voice or that person or the energy Absolutely. to other people because they may not have all of that. And not everybody does, frankly. It's uncommon. Correct. Correct. But they can have it. And sometimes yes. they need you like the catalyst to, to really find it, you know? Yep. And and I've got two great kids to prove that it works. You have and the I'm, evidence. And I, yes, and I, and I'm happy too. So I can't complain. <laughs> Wow, we hit on some important things. Okay, we have five minutes left. Do you want to ask a question? You don't want to ask, you want to hand me a question to ask? No, sorry. I see you shaking your head the whole time no, in the background. She's great. No, we don't have one question. Okay. <laughs> I thought we would try something different and have somebody okay. ask a question. But, um, let me, let's do this then. If you had, if you had a guess, somebody who, who might have a question for you, who's been fearful of, of just even making change or, or taking the first step, what question might they ask you? What's the first question you usually hear? How did you do it? And you how just did, told us. How, how did you do it? Yeah. It's how, how did you do it? You know, you know the stigmatism, you know what it's like, um, you know, because sometimes quite honestly, you, you lose friendships or people who you thought we're friends. Um, you get to learn who your real friends are, who your support system is. And that's another piece that you have to grapple with. Folks that you thought were in your corner that really weren't, who were happy with you being miserable. And now that you're liberated, they're, um, they're not so happy for you. That so interesting. Misery yeah. loves company. Yes, in the worst way totally yeah. unhealthy toxic like yes you know what i've heard the, the the comparison of like let's say um you're a smoker you quit smoking so i can't relate because I, I was never a smoker but if you smoke and you quit smoking then whenever somebody around you is smoking you can't stand the smoke yeah right so like when you've when you've actually like changed and you're a, you go from being half glass empty to half glass full the people around you who are half glass empty, it probably is like, oh my God, get me away from that. Like, I don't even like the way it feels because you're so aware of it now. Yep, yep. Right? And, and, and to have people say, uh, you know, I've had folks say, oh, listen, you know, you you really think that that you're all that. And I said, if I don't, who else will? That's right, that's right. Who else will? That's the I consistent think, you know, message. Yes. That's the consistent message. You gotta love yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. You gotta love yourself. And that is what your children see. And that is what they they learn to do. And it works the opposite way. Yes. Which is the worst thing you could do for your kids is to show them the opposite of that, which is yeah. what they end up carrying through life. And then next thing you know, generationally, it keeps Correct. carrying on. Correct. Yep. 
And, I like and, what you say, and you right. I don't hear that very often. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> but you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly right. So yeah. that, yeah, that's a telltale sign. Listen, I um, actually could talk with you for a few more hours. This is like, we just scratched the surface. Yeah. Um, I, I think that we, I think we just got a really good, I mean, there's so much we just packed into like 45 minutes. So what I would like to do is, first of all, I want to thank you for, for coming on. And just this was completely way more than I expected. I knew this would be great, but this was this was awesome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Great. You have a great story, mm-hmm. very, great story, great lessons. And, you know, this is going to be out there forever unless YouTube shuts down their, their business. People are going to watch this for years to come. And I hope we reach a lot of people, a lot of women. And I hope that they reach you. So that being said, tell everybody where they can reach you. Across social media, Instagram, you know, that's the spot now. I am Dr. Lisa T. Lewis is a great place to reach me. As well as you can visit my website, drlisatlewis.com. Those are the best places. And Facebook, it's the same thing. Fantastic. So we're going to put that down below in the description. Yes, thank so you. anybody that wants to go down there and look, they can see it. Um, I want to say something that that is a, l- a little different than how I usually end the show. I usually say, "Be humble, hustle, and do the work." But yes. this isn't about that. This one is is do the work, be self aware, and know that you can reach your potential. And that this, that's more appropriate for a way to end this show. Yes, you got it. Thank you, Matt. I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs>